generative AI shines when you use all of these LLMs and prompts and other stuff in your application to add some value to your personal life or to your business. Llama Index is such framework which is growing rapidly and with Llama Index you can build generative AI applications by using these LLMs in a more productive and value added way. In this video I am going to introduce you to a new feature of Llama Index which is called as Query Pipeline. Now the idea behind this Query Pipeline is quite interesting. Just take a step back and think about all of the generative AI applications or LLM usage you have seen so far. So what is happening is that you just don't download the model and start curing it from your terminal or your Google Colab notebook or even from the console of your chatbot. The real value comes out when you interact with that LLM through your application. You pass it the prompts which you want and you train these models on your own data or fine tune them or use RAG. And then you orchestrate this full workflow in order to make your business use that LLM in a productive way. So that is where this whole workflow orchestration idea comes in or query, curing your LLM comes in. And there is not one way of curing the LLM. There are multiple ways. For example, if you look at this screen, this query pipeline is a new feature from Llama Index which was just released few hours ago. This query pipeline is a real groundbreaking feature in my humble opinion because it is letting you query or orchestrate or chain your prompts, your prompt templates, your LLMs, your retrievers, your re-rankers and your responses, synthesizers and few other things in one workflow. If you want to do it manually, you can still do it. People have been doing it over the last few months, but it is quite a pain in the back. But this query pipeline makes it fairly easy. Now, if you look at this diagram, what is happening is from the left, user is queuing with the query string or some sort of prompt or prompt template. Then that prompt is being given to large language model. Now, this where it is written LLM, it is also a node, which is a concept in Llama index because every component is a node. This node could be LLM or this could be any other thing. And then from this LLM, we are talking to retriever model or re-ranker or even synthesizer and the response is being written. Now, when we say retriever, a retriever is an interface that uh, returns documents based on an unstructured query, which makes it a more general tool than a vector store. Unlike a vector store, a retriever doesn't need to be able to store documents. Instead, its primary function is to return or retrieve them. When we say re-ranker, a re-ranker is a model which is also called as cross encoder. It is a type of model that given a query and document pair, it will output a similarity score. And then we can use that score to reorder the documents by relevance to our query. This is also called as two-stage retrieval system. Synthesizer means that with this synthesizer, we can generate custom data sets via LLMs that are tailored to our own requirements. And this could be for the models from Anthropic, OpenAI, VLLM or even from Hugging Face. And there are a lot of other use cases of this synthesizer too. So these are the things which you can include your own pipeline where you are curing it, you are generating prompt template, talking to LLM or to retriever or to re-ranker and then you are combining or orchestrating the response in a proper workflow as per your requirement and then returning the response to the user. In order to understand better, let's go to the demo. Let's first make sure we install this and then we are going to see how exactly this query pipeline feature works in Llama Index. Let me go to my terminal and I'm going to use it on one of my cloud instance, which is EC2 instance running G4DNX large, which means that it has one GPU card of 16 GB RAM and it is hosted in AWS public cloud. The operating system I'm using is Ubuntu. Let me quickly show Ubuntu version. So you can see that I am using 22.04 Ubuntu version. Let me clear my screen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to install or upgrade Llama Index because this feature 
is released just few hours ago so it is still very new so if you are using the old version of llama index then make sure that you upgrade it so let me upgrade it pip install llama under llama index let me quickly grab the llama index pip project so i'm just going to do pip install llama dash index dash dash upgrade so let's wait for it to upgrade it because i already have it installed so you can see that my uh, llama index is upgraded and installed let me clear my screen next thing we need to do is to install phoenix it is not necessary but it is just for observability i have another video on it if you haven't seen it please check it out it is just for the observability if you it's not necessary to install it here but always helps it is installed let me clear my screen okay so these are few of the prerequisites you also need um, to maybe set open ai key if you are using gpt4 but i am going to go with 3.5 turbo gpt so it shouldn't be needed now let me fire up my python interpreter so this is my python interpreter and let me first import some of the stuff which we have installed like phoenix and llama index okay so it says import phoenix as px okay let me quickly check what is happening i think i need to put that from here sorry i just realized i have upgraded the wrong phoenix it is not the other one it is this phoenix arise dash phoenix so let's download it let's wait for it to get installed and then we will fire up our python interpre interpreter again so my arise phoenix has installed fine this time let me clear my screen and then fire up my python interpreter again and try to rerun it that's done and this time you can see that it imported successfully now let's also import the llama index stuff which we were talking about and all we need to do is to import the llama index let me do it let's wait for it to come back that's done also let's launch the px or arise phoenix app so that we will uh, log everything okay one thing if you're running it in cloud make sure that in security groups your port 6006 is opened because that is where it will be visible and you can even go to that in your browser and check it out so you can see that arise phoenix you can also set it to the global handler of uh, llama index as i said it is optional okay now let's do the real fun stuff where we are importing the query pipeline from llama index that is done now let's also import the open ai because we are going to use gpt 3.5 turbo model that is also done and let me also import the prompt template and there you go and now because we are going to do some vectorization so that is why i am also importing this vector store index and stuff now i already have a sample file in my local system just a simple text file which i'll be using as a sample which is in the data di directory so that is what i'm going to use hopefully it is going to maybe i will just get the full path let me quickly get the full path think it is it is home because it's in ubuntu use it home ubuntu data and that is the whole path of my file and let me click here so this is the beauty of this llama index 2 that it provides you out of the box reader and now let's load the data with the help of this reader so it will read the whole directory and get all the files so that is done and now let's do some of the stuff here let's import our os utility to do some of the os level things just like checking the path and then i am going to import the storage context from llama index which is a very uh, fine concept storage concept is basically an abstraction 
which um, abstracts your nodes, indexes, and vector stores. And this actually contains your underlying base document store for nodes, base index store for indexes, and vector store for vectors. I have a separate video where I go into a lot more detail as how this is used. Okay, so now let's build our storage context, which is simply we are building in memory. So this is the command for it. So if you look at it, it looks scary, but it's very simple. Now what is happening here is, okay, I need to do the OpenAI model. Sorry, I need to set my OpenAI key. Let me quickly do, do it and then clear the screen and I will reload it. So once I exported the OpenAI API key in my environment variable, I was able to run this where I am just checking first from this line. I mean that if there is a storage context, uh, if not, then I'm creating it. And if uh, in this one, I'm just setting it up. And in this one, I'm rebuilding it. If it already exists in the present directory and persisting it. Now, uh, as I said, I already have another video where I go into way more detail as how to set it up. Now, we have set um, all of the stage here. Now we can see how can we chain together prompt and RLM by using this query pipeline. So, sorry, I just need to, I'll just remove it, sorry about that. I'll just go down just to clear the screen. Now, what we are going to do here, we are going to sh see a simple workflow of chaining together a prompt with LLM. So the prompt is, uh, simple a variable where I'm storing it please generate related movies to movie name which is a variable and then we will define a chain on initialization and the prompt template which we are going to use is this which consists of this prompt str and then I am specifying the LLM as OpenAI's model which is GPT-3 3.5 you can use any other model of your choice if you like and then I'm going to define our query pipeline where I am going to chain this prompt template LLM and that's it. So our um, query template is done and now let's run it with a value. So I'm just passing it the movie name departed. You can pass it with your own and you can see that now it is running the module here. And it is going to talk to LLM and now you can uh, print your output. There you go. So it has given you all the movies related to the departed. And of course, you can use your own data. You can use whatever you want uh, with this. And then sky is the limit here. And there are, as I mentioned, there are a lot of other things. You can rewrite your whole rack pipeline with it. and. Uh, even built a full rack pipeline with custom workflows. I'll be doing more videos on this feature because I think this is a very handy feature in order to build full blown generative AI applications. But just to keep this video short and sweet, let's uh, stay, you know, finish this video here and then we will uh, check out our uh, the next feature in our next video. And that's it, guys. If you are stuck anywhere, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll be happy to help out. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps. Thank you very much.